What's up everybody? It is Wednesday, February 15th. I'm excited. Why? Because that means we're going to Daytona tomorrow. So I'm going to take you guys through all the behind the scenes of the entire race weekend. I'm super pumped, but we decided I'm going to start it today um, of all my pre-race prep and getting ready. So the first thing that we're doing is my health routine. I'm at Cool Jevity locally here in uh, Hickory, North Carolina. So I want to take you through the health routine first. So come on in. Hey. Oh, there's a special guest in here, the much better looking one. <laughs> so, Tay is with us today. Uh, this is our friend Jared, who owns a cool Jeopardy. Jared, I appreciate you letting us come in. Yes, As always, we're here multiple times a week. You want to take us through really quick just the, um, what we're doing today yeah, and absolutely. how it's going to help us win Daytona, most importantly? Absolutely. Come on back. the one and only cool Jevity cryotherapy chamber. This therapy right here is going to help Matt with his blood circulation at nutrient source blood and re -energize. That's right. Oh, dude, it feels so good when you get out of it. You'll see it here shortly. Oh, I love it. We'll drop into a valve oh, negative 200 degrees at least. Yeah, it will be cold as ice. <laughs> All right. Prior to that, he's going to do our red light therapy. And in here, this is going to energize Matt in a different way. It's going to help him on a cellular structure to get the mitochondria stimulated and his ATP ready to go for race day. Sweet. All righty. We're ready to go. A uh, pretty important piece is up next, and that is my study for Daytona. So I'm doing that, and I also got my uh, notes on my phone here. You want to see them? No, just kidding. Yeah, get those. <laughs> but these races are important because it's, man, I treat them like a chess match. You truly do. And you have to block out like all emotion, which is really hard to do when we're playing, you know, bumper cars at 200 miles an hour at Daytona. You really have to block out all emotion. And I put a lot of emphasis on treating these like a chess match. And Michael McDowell told me something that I'll never forget about super speedway racing a handful of years back. And he said, you got to learn to love it. Because you can do everything right and things cannot go your way, or you can minimize and do everything right and put yourself in position and it's your day, it's your day, but the study's important. And Tay, what are you up to for Daytona prep? I am juicing for Matt. <laughs> Getting all his greens. <laughs> Alright, Matt, you want to come on in? to the airport, left at uh, 5.15 in the morning. Not much of a morning person, but today I'll make the exception. I'm a morning person today because we're going to Daytona, finally, race season. I, uh, I'm i ready. I've never felt better. Felt better health-wise, physically, spiritually, and all. Man, I'm ready to go. I can't wait to get there. So if Matt D is, uh, is awake and ready to go at 5.15 in the morning, it better be something good. So that means Daytona race season's finally here. I'm ready. Rental cars, fancy. <laughs> Chariot awaits. There we go. Oh, I get it. We're here. You can see I'm not a sweatshirt anymore. The weather's a little bit nicer down here. We're in the garage at Daytona. Um, we're going to do a hauler tour shortly, but it's going to be for both of us because they just redid our hauler and I haven't even seen it yet, so we'll, we'll do it together. All right, we're, uh, oh wait, we got a document first. Corey's got. My bald head? Corey's got, getting a suntan. Bald is sexy. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and haul. We got Chad here, he's kind of important. Sort of, some weeks. Yeah, he could be. Hopefully I'm important, that means we run good. Yeah, yeah. If I'm not important, then we didn't run too good. Then we just place the blame all on. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it on the driver or somebody. All right, hauler, we got Monty here. Monty, don't hide from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got, I believe all the cabinets uh, they redid, but I'm curious to see the lounge. Got a 
uh, got a cabinet back here of my own. I got my own driver cabinet. Whew. Look at that. We're big time around here. It looks good in here though, for real. Um, what you doing in there, Matt? <laughs> got big news to tell him. <laughs> or changing for my photo shoot, one of the two. Day. It's like 80 something and sunny, so I was just gonna sit on the beach. But the team said I definitely need to be here to qualify, so I'm here. <laughs> we qualify, make my one lap fury, hold her wide open. Hopefully, we qualify like top 15 or something. I'm not too worried about it. We qualify 30th in Talladega and one, so it's not a huge deal, but I would like to have some starting track position so then we can, uh, the stages are short, truck races are short. But, anyways, that, have a couple appearances race tonight. I can't wait now. It feels good. It's race day. It feels weird. It feels good. It's finally here. So loud that literally you pull it out just in the video. It's so loud that you hear neighbors going, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen my Camaro? Did you see some of the videos? Of it? I, oh yeah. It's uh, it is loud. So it's got a cam and it's got headers and full exhaust. And I did, of course, the course at extreme exhaust to the loudest possible. It's, it's mostly a track car, but I still feel that it's streetable. So I still drive it on the street. And whenever we go, to, we were going to do our red light and cryotherapy uh, session and we were gonna drive it. And I was like, all right, let's go. I'm gonna fire up the Camaro. And Tay just looks at me and she's like, really? <laughs> but it did remind her, we had a good memory. We had a good throwback when we were driving my loud, obnoxious car and playing around and driving around the street. She was like, man, this brings us back to our early 20s. We'd always do dates on my cars. I've had a bunch of Corvettes. They've always been loud or I've put superchargers on them and all kinds of stuff. And it brought us back. We're like, hey, this is like our old days of dating, driving my loud, obnoxious cars down the road and going on a date. I'm just curious. I know I said I was gonna talk about racing, but hang on a second. I'm just curious. I mean, he keeps talking about how awesome his wife is, how awesome she was when they dated and stuff like that. Do you ever let your wife drive you somewhere? Yeah, so I'm getting my, somebody stole my Z06. That's the same spec that I had, same color. I have that exact car. Oh, you do? Yeah, that's, that is what I have. I have the full Z07 track, track that car. Oh, right. Yeah, the, the only difference I saw is I have the carbon wheels uh, on it. But anyways, uh, Tay's gonna, you're gonna see Tay driving it probably this week. I'm getting it back finally from, of course, I can't leave anything alone. I did fab speed exhaust on it. So it's gonna be as if it's not loud enough and cool enough after me. I did that, so I get it back this week. And you're gonna see Tay driving me around in it. What what is it like for you? Do you get nervous when she drives you? No, I'm gonna be honest. My my wife, I'm gonna well, be honest, then I'm gonna be embarrassed. Uh, Tay is really, really insanely naturally coordinated. So she beats me. You know those basketball like games at the arcade where you know you keep on swishing up? Literally will beat me nine out of ten times. She's like a machine. But anyways, what I'm getting at, transfer that over into her natural inclination for driving and stuff. She's I, I think we need to get her in that like better half dash and stuff. Cause dude, we stick I put her on i racing. I, I'm not making this up. I'm not being biased here. She is better than anybody else I've ever put on there that's been like new to it and picks it up like that. So there's maybe the race of blood runs in the family. Every time that I come here though, that feeling never goes away. There is something extra special about this place. And I just remember growing up watching it as a kid and it was so special to me. And actually being here, I never forget that. Cause I'm like, gosh, I was just a normal race fan kid. No family history of it all. And now I'm driving on the track. What's it like for you? You know, you're a brand new team, but well, you're not brand new anymore. What did you learn last year that you're bringing to this year that you're gonna go out there and hit the ground running and kick butt even more than what you did last year. I learned that after putting her in victory lane, I want to do it way more this year. 
way more. Let's give a big round of applause. <laughs> That's an awesome thing. I love, I love how your fans I mean, this guy, he's like, yeah! And they, <laughs> get just, they, they get just as excited as you do. But go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, I just love that. I, I, man, I have the best fans. I'm blessed to be on the desert. I, they are like, they share that passion and that excitement of when I want to tell a day go, like, I'm like, like, fans were crying as much as me and my wife and everything, you <laughs> see? I love it, it's so cool. But man, I, yeah, going into this year, we learned a lot last year. Uh, we've had more time to prepare. I think our team should be a solid step better, kind of minimize mistakes. And I want to knock my goal will be to hit victory lane multiple times this year and be in the playoffs. Um, we're still growing as a team, but I think you're going to see us be a, a big solid step better. And Chev Chevrolet has been awesome too. What does it mean for you to be able to and have a team that allows you to talk about your faith? Oh man, I I love my team. I love. I, the other day I drive in circles for a living, right? Like, so no matter what happens, I should be pretty darn excited and thankful that in our temporary time here, that if I can drive in circles and glorify God most importantly in all things that I do, driving in circles, must being able to have fun, enjoying the sun, enjoying a beautiful day, being at Daytona and appreciating these things. I am so, so thankful. And I've, I've had a crazy uh, last couple of years and I'm really thankful that I have an amazing fan base and, and group of support that have bared with me through so much and I've been humbled a whole, whole lot um, as I needed to be. Uh, praise the Lord, I've been humbled a whole bunch. I mean, I'm very thankful that I've I've had a lot of life change and see, I, I got to see that if, if you're not, and I mean this really from my heart for everybody here, if I can share that, if you're not fighting a spiritual battle, you're fighting the wrong battle. I was fighting the wrong battle and fighting myself for 29 years and when I gave my life to Christ, it changed everything. It changed my marriage. It changed every single aspect of my life. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When I poured out my heart and cried out to God, I understood what it meant to be born again, to be born of the Holy Spirit and have my life radically changed and have an encounter. Not a religion, not none of that. A personal encounter with God. And he came into my life and I accepted him and changed my life every day. And every day I wake up so thankful. Preach, baby, preach. I love it, man. It's a big round of applause. I work out throughout the week to to have arms like that, legs like that. I mean, I mean, I mean, is this natural or do you have to work at it? I, I, I didn't know. She she asked me, and I'm like, you know, that's a great question. I don't know if the guy works out. Man, yeah. I is, is this farm fresh? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, it is. I try and be about like five days a week of pretty disciplined weightlifting. I've actually been my main focus lately is I've, I've come a long way. My wife has helped me a lot. We've been on a very big holistic health journey and I've had a lot of a shift in thinking on all my health, all my preparation and man, it's worked absolute miracles. But I'm going to be honest, a lot of people don't know I was, I've had some health, I don't want to say troubles. I've been very, you know, fit and healthy, but I started noticing like a little bit of a decline. Uh, I'll be honest, after I overdone, I, I, I was, after I had COVID, to be honest, I had I just started noticing lingering effects. I was having a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of brain fog, a little lack of sharpness, things like that. That in our job that we do, I'm like, that is unacceptable. I can't have that. I have to be at absolute peak performance. So it shifted my thinking away from everything, kind of big pharmaceutical and all that, and shifted to a holistic health journey. And my wife has been a rock star in that. So yes, I. But I always have to feel the question just to make sure that all there's right. nothing crazy. Hey, hey, what's your name, man? I'm just joking with you. Daniel. Daniel, and what's your question? Um, like, can you just walk us through what you're thinking when you're sitting on the front stretch at Talladega and you didn't know if you won or not? Yeah, walk us through that moment again. All right, so I think it was something like five minutes. I didn't believe anybody. I was like, oh, oh that was like an hour. I was sitting there on that front stretch like, you got to be kidding me. They still don't know. I was... So when we crossed the line or when we were coming to the to the checkered and I'm trying to hang on, you know, from spinning out, I spun out after the line. I, I looked and I saw, it's crazy, even though it's all happening quick, I saw those yellow lights come on and I knew that I was leading. I knew that I had passed it and I saw the lights come on and I'm ready to celebrate. I'm like, we won, I know we just won this race. And then I'm sitting driving around, I'm like, well, let me just make sure, you know, they'll call it. And then they make, make us wait like two hours <laughs> until they called it. And when I was sitting there, I was like, then I start questioning myself, I'm like, Man, did we? Am I, was I wrong? And, and then finally, I did pray a lot in that five minutes, I'm going to be honest with you. And then I was just like, no, no, not again. No more heartbreak story. No more so close. I am ready to win and win races and be winning. And I'm done with all that. And I was so thankful when they finally called us. Like, 
a billion pounds was lifted off my shoulder. So that was a, a moment I'll never forget. Great. I got one last fan question but before I let him ask this guy sitting in the Z06 tech It is long race. I get it. And I know that you guys are honest with me already. I like that. Yeah. But do you guys carry anything inside that race truck that if you do have a red flag or you have to stop or it's a little bit longer, maybe you didn't eat as much as you should. So we're trying to see who uh, may, maybe wear these out to qualify them. We're trying to see who looks better, in me or Bristol. All right, let's compare. We'll give a comparison. I don't know. Who should walk out to qualify them? I hate to say it, she looks a little bit better than me. <laughs> Getting ready to qualify the truck. I have no idea where we're going to stack up. I just got to get up. All right, go to the gears properly. I don't get scared. I'm going to hold it wide open. The qualifying gear is really, you know, we a lot about the team. And my job is to go out there and hold it wide open for laps. See what kind of speed it's got. The main thing is how it grabs. Obviously, Talladega, I had a track where the truck does really good to grab. So, let's find out. Today did not go quite as planned, but that's super speedway racing, and that's how it turns out most of the time. So we uh, we finished third in the first stage, had a rocket ship for a truck. Honestly, it was so fast we were pushing the heck out of the 19 truck. I uh, finished third, so that was good, helped us points wise. And uh, after that, we but I had an issue that we had to come in and fix a brake related issue, so I'd come down pit road and sacrifice all the track position, and then after that. Um, kind of put us in a bad spot because then you're a little bit in the eye of the storm and and uh when we were up there back back toward the front we just got bounced around like a pinball <laughs> so um finished 20th with some pretty heavy damage but uh but we'll take it it's fine move on to the next one move on to vegas thank you to our whole team for working their tails off rackley roofing War shocks, Chevy, all that. We're going to have some fast Chevys in the field this year, that's for sure. So, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in throughout the whole uh, the whole race weekend, all the behind the scenes. We're going to be doing it a whole lot more often. So, appreciate you guys. Hope you all have a good week.